Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. Before we get into today's video, a couple of quick announcements here at the beginning of the video. If you guys missed my announcement from earlier in this week, I was invited to attend CarrierCon, which is aboard the USS Hornet in Almeida, California. It's their pop cultural convention. It seems to be a really cool event. They're putting a lot of work and effort into it because I've been in communication with them for some time now. I will be there on Saturday, March 18th from 10 to 5. They're also having a second event on Sunday, which I believe Wargaming's putting on, and I'll be there for that day as well. So if you're in the Bay Area and would like to catch me at CarrierCon, that is where I will be. All right, on into the video now. So Wargaming announced that the bugs with islands are getting looked at now. Well, I, I don't know if it's really one bug or multiple bugs, because there's quite a few issues in-game, especially since the underwater world of submarines were introduced into the game, where there's a lot of weird spots along islands and near islands that you catch and get stuck on, and it's really, really frustrating. This also isn't limited to any mode or anything, because it is, of course, just an issue with the islands in game it's happened to us in clan battles and ranked and stuff you're nowhere near an island then your ship gets snagged on it and it's like impossible to get off of it it's happened to me several times even on stream where i'm clearly nowhere near an island and i get called on you can even go into free camp if you hit control shift and backspace and dunk the camera beneath the water and you see that there's literally nothing touching your ship underneath there so that that's an issue that again has been around for some time but in my opinion got a lot worse with submarines because they went in and redid the underwater well there was no underwater on most of the maps it was just kind of a, a void with of course you know a couple of textures here and there and some collision boxes near the islands but you know after this game had been out for what five years before they decided to bless us with submarines most of the issue spots were known to the general player base especially those that play competitive but then again when they went in and redid everything with the uh, submarines that changed a lot well actually everything about the underwater world of water warships and of course caused some new issues that are still prevalent today so in my opinion again it is worse in the current form however they've announced they are finally fixing this or they're trying to fix it so this dev blog will be linked down below oh also along with the Hornet's website. You can catch more information about the Carrier Con there uh, down below. Again, I will be there on the 18th and the 19th of March. But anyway, you want to read along as I read aloud? Link down below. I'll throw up the relevant images of the dev blog as we go through it. So they state, in the near future, we will begin testing some improvements aimed at solving the occasional issue of ships getting stuck on or near islands. The changes being tested involved updating the collision model of islands to exactly match their shorelines as visible from above the water. This will put a stop to situations in which a ship passing near an island could get stuck in place and lose the ability to properly maneuver, even when there was no apparent visual contact between the ship and the land. With the sh changes implemented, ships that come too close to land will slip away from it, thereby helping them to continue moving freely. If, however, a ship crashes bow first into an island, it will still need to use the reverse gear to break free. The map hotspot has been updated to test these changes. If successful, we will gradually begin implementing the technique to all maps in the game. So they provide a couple of details, uh, not well, not really detailed uh, photographs here, but a couple of screenshots here demonstrating what they are doing. So as you can see in the before picture, this ship, it looks like, uh, well, I actually can't tell what the, the, this is, the, the pixels aren't there. So some cruiser, or maybe it is about, oh, is that the one of the new hybrid carriers, maybe, but, but uh, whatever. So you can see it's donked into the island fairly far away from the shore. And then the second image, you can see that they've uh, messed with the collision boxes and it's much closer to the shore now. So on the surface, this of course sounds like a good thing because again, it is th th there's not much worse a feeling than when you're in ranked or CBs and you just get a little bit too close to an island, but it still looks like you have the space to maneuver and then you just get stuck like some invisible hand just <laughs> and grabbed your ship. So it sounds good on the surface, but there's a couple of things to consider here. So the slip mechanic is kind of what I would like to know more about. 
because there's, again, whole classes of cruisers in this game that, cruisers and destroyers, that are designed around island camping and hugging their island waifu. And lots of times, coming from someone who's played a fair few of these tech lines, like, you know, American cruisers or the, the Japanese gunboats when you can get behind island cover, you are pretty much almost on top of those islands at times. So is it going to be that sensitive to where if you aren't stuck, but you're just basically like brushing up against it, is it still going to slip you away from it and into the line of fire? And uh, again, it's not uncommon for these cruisers to pretty much beach themselves on these islands. Again, not, not bow on, but you know, side on or at an angle to where they can hug the island waifu as hard as they can. So that's one major concern that I have. The other one would be about submarines too. There's, of course, quite a few issues where submarines can, um, well, not, not where they can, but where for some reasons you, you about darn near beat yourself in underwater um, collision boxes that don't look quite right, but I guess this will fix this too. Now, understandably, this is going to take some time for them to actually implement because they have to go in and change the hitboxes of all of the islands and such in every single map. And if you think about it, you know, you think, oh, that's not, there's not really that many maps in this game. If you play mostly one tier, there's not. But if you uh, go up and down the, the tiers a bit, there's actually something like, I think like 40 maps, 30 something maps in this game, which is quite a bit. And then, of course, you know, not... It's not like these island the, the, these maps have one or two islands on these maps you know have dozens of islands on them in some cases so the, the slip is the concerning thing for me you know how's that going to be implemented is it going to be kind of it sounds like it's going to kind of be like sea of thieves if you ever played that game it's a um it's a pirate game you know you got you yourself and your three other crewmates you're on the on the high seas and you got your pirate ship and you know you, it's a open world game and you can, of course, pull up to islands in your pirate boat ship, and you get too close. Basically, the game will kind of just push you away um, until your ship's at the proper depth again. And that that game's kind of aggressive with it. Your ship can actually get flung pretty hard if it does uh, get a little bit too beachy going on there. So I would be interested in seeing how sensitive that is and how um, hard that's going to push your ship. Back. But again, otherwise, you know, it sounds like a good idea. This will fix a lot of the issues that players have with randomly getting stuck on rocks and things that aren't there in the, at least visibly to us, you know, a couple of hitboxes might have gotten missed over with the introduction of our glorious new class called Submarines. So, yeah. Another bit of news that got released today is the detailed stats of Tashkent 41. This is the Tier 7 version of the tier 9 soviet gunboat destroyer the tashkent however according to ouija this is more of a torpedo focused version of the ship rather than the gun focused version of the ship that we have have at tier 9 it's a real still historical ship so i think it's pretty neat that it is getting an earlier version of it i think we're going to start to see a lot more of these you know either earlier or later versions of ships just because like i've mentioned before they're kind of running out of ships to introduce into the game well ship classes i should say there's you know there's you know 200 something fletchers in existence and we or I think we're slowly going to get all of them at the way that they're going with the Fletchers. But anyway, on to the Tashkent 41. So this is a Tier 7 DD, keep in mind. And right out the gate, hit points 21,200. So I thought they were going to bonk this a little bit harder with the Nerf Bat. Because the Tashkent at, at Tier 9 it is a pretty healthy DD with its 21,800 HP. Now granted that that stock with no... Um, with no commander skills on, so yeah, but 21,200. If you're curious, the A hole of the Tashkent at tier 9 has 16,700 HP. So, yeah, that, that's all really healthy. DD at tier 7. Okay, I don't play uh, DDs too much, mostly gunboats and such, and they tend to have a bit more HP, but I mean, still, that, that that's a lot of HP for a tier 7 DD to have. So, she has 3x1 of her 130 millimeter guns. They have a firing range of 10.5 kilometers. Uh, HE shell does a maximum damage of 1900 and pins 22 millimeters of armor. It's pretty good for tier 7. Uh, you know, you can throw FHE on there and be pretty decent. 
8% fire chance, 870 meters a second, HE shell velocity, AP shell damage 2500, AP velocity 870 meters a second, 4 second reload time. Again, it's not a gunboat, it's supposed to be a torpedo boat. So let's see what they did with the torpedoes. So the torp tubes, you have 3x3 533s, maximum damage of 15,100, 10 kilometer range, 60 knots is their top speed, well, their speed. 70 second reload time, that's pretty nice. Uh, 180 time, the launcher is 7.2 seconds and detected from 1.2 kilometers away. And let's take a look at the Tashkent now. So with the torps you have now, the, I mean, they sound pretty similar. So they have two more kilometers than the uh, upgraded torps on the Tashkent. They sound like they're the 5339 Mod 2. So um, they're one second longer at 70 seconds instead of the 69 seconds. They do the alpha damage of them. Yep, 15,100. So it, it, it's the um, upgraded torpedoes, essentially, with a one second longer reload time. The speed 60 knots, and then the uh, detection is... What is the detection? It doesn't say on the wiki, because why would it say on the wiki? Well, 1.2 sounds about right, because I've played through the Tashkin. I've played the Tashkin quite a bit. Granted, I don't play... It has a torpedo boat. I just kind of, you know, hold down left mouse and smack W and S a bunch. So it's the upgraded torps at tier 9, which, with more range, admittedly, 10 kilometer range at tier 7. So that's pretty decent in my mind. Again, I don't play a lot of torpedo boats. Feel free to correct me in the comments down below if that is or is not decent. But with a 70 second reload time, that's, that's pretty good. I do know that much for sure. So... Okay, let's see, what do they have for consumables? Damage con, 5 second run time, reloads in 40 seconds. Uh, smoke generator, 20 second uh, run time. The smoke lasts for 85 seconds, 450 uh, meter radius. Three charges of that. Engine boost and a torpedo reload booster. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's right, I forgot they said they were, that they were giving her that. Okay, so yeah, I mean, a 70 second base torpedo reload time isn't that bad on 9 torps. I know to us, you know, main battery gun guys, that does sound like forever, but I mean, you know, on torpedoes, that's not bad. Then you get the reload booster on top of that. It seems decent so far, but again, let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with that. Um, I mean, it, again, sounds decent in my mind. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, if you want to check out these dev blogs for yourself, links to both of them are in the description down below below so check that out for yourselves if you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel we're on our way to 50,000 subs and i cannot thank you guys enough for that hope you guys have a wonderful friday um i will not be live streaming tonight i've got some family stuff going on i will be live streaming sunday night we'll have a makeup live stream on sunday night around four o'clock in the afternoon so make sure to come out for that hope you guys enjoyed have a wonderful weekend hope to see you guys on sunday <laughs>